Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Faith Lutheran Church. And here today for the divine service, we are glad that each and every one of you has joined us today. One uh, quick reminder, and that is the church is also gathering to pray and hear preaching, uh, hear the scriptures on Wednesdays at 7 o'clock. We'll pray together Vespers. Before, uh, before the 7 o'clock service, there is also a meal time and I invite you to come for that as well. So, Wednesday, 7 o'clock throughout this Lenten season. This morning, we will use the order of service, Divine Service Setting 3, where the liturgy today begins on page 184. We sing the opening hymn, What God Ordains is Always Good, hymn 760.
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart and confess our sins unto God our Father, beseeching him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. Our help is in the name of the Lord. I said I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord. O Almighty God, merciful Father, I, the poor miserable sinner, confess unto you all my sins and iniquities, with which I have ever offended you, and justly deserve your temporal and eternal punishment. But I am heartily sorry for them, and sincerely repent of them, and I pray you for their boundless mercy, and for the sake of the holy, innocent, bitter sufferings and death of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, to be gracious and merciful to me, a poor sinful being. Upon this, your confession, I, by virtue of my office as a called and ordained servant of the word, announce the grace of God unto all of you. And in the stead and by the command of my Lord Jesus Christ, I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Remember your mercy, O Lord, and your steadfast love, for they have been from of old. Son. 
Son of God, Redeemer of the world, have mercy upon us. Let us pray. O oh God, you see that of ourselves we have no strength. By your mighty power defend us from all adversities that may happen to the body and from all evil thoughts that may assault and hurt the soul. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. The Old Testament reading for the second Sunday in Lent is from Genesis chapter 32. The same night he arose and took his two wives, his two female servants, and his eleven children and crossed the ford of the Jabbok. He took them and sent them across the stream and everything else that he had. And Jacob was left alone, and a man wrestled with him until the breaking of the day. When the man saw that he did not prevail against Jacob, he touched his hip socket, and Jacob's hip was put out of joint as he wrestled with him. Then he said, Let me go, for the day has broken. But Jacob said, I will not let you go unless you bless me. And he said to him, What is your name? And he said, Jacob. Then he said, Your name shall no longer be called Jacob, but Israel, for you have striven with God and with men and have prevailed. Then Jacob asked him, Please tell me your name. But he said, Why is it that you ask my name? And there he blessed him. So Jacob called the name of the place Peniel, saying, For I have seen God face to face, and yet my life has been delivered. The sun rose upon him as he passed Penuel, limping because of his hip. Therefore to this day the people of Israel do not eat the sinew of the thigh that is on the hip socket, because he touched the socket of Jacob's hip on the sinew of the thigh. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The troubles of my heart are enlarged. Bring me out of my distresses. The epistle is from Romans chapter 5. Therefore, since we have been justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Through him we have also obtained access by faith into this grace in which we stand, and we rejoice in hope of the glory of God. More than that, we rejoice in our sufferings, knowing that suffering produces endurance, and endurance produces character, and character produces hope, and hope does not put us to shame. 
because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit who has been given to us. This is the word of the Lord. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, for his steadfast love endures forever. Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 15th chapter. Jesus went away from there and withdrew to the district of Tyre and Sidon. And behold, a Canaanite woman from that region came out and was crying, Have mercy on me, O Lord, son of David. My daughter is severely oppressed by a demon. But he did not answer her a word, and his disciples came and begged him, saying, Send her away, for she is crying out after us. He answered, I was sent only to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. But she came and knelt before him, saying, Lord, help me. And he answered, It is not right to take the children's bread and throw it to the dogs. She said, Yes, Lord. Yet even the dogs eat the crumbs that fall from their master's table. Then Jesus answered her, O woman, great is your faith. Be it done for you as you desire. And her daughter was healed instantly. This is the Gospel of the Lord. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty,
Grace to you and peace from God our Father, from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. The Canaanite woman in our Holy Gospel for today went through much suffering. Her daughter was severely oppressed by a demon. And yet, by God's grace, the mother knew who Jesus was and what he is able to do. She persevered with faith in Christ, and in the end, Jesus healed her daughter. I want to talk with you today about persevering through trial and tribulation by God, through faith in Christ. As you know, we live in a fallen world, and all of us suffer from various trials and tribulations. We suffer from our own sin and from the sin of others. We suffer from disease, sickness, cancer, depression, mental illness, dysfunction in the family, and then the list goes on and on. Some struggle with an addiction, uh, or even a family member who has left the faith, and the list goes on and on. It's easy for us to think that God punishes people with sickness and poverty because of some unconfessed sin. The disciples in our text for today thought, why help this Canaanite woman? She comes from a pagan nation and she deserves what she is getting. Get her out of here. She's bothering us. But God's wonderful justice, if you're going to talk about, talk about punishment, is that he punished his own, si his own son because of our sin. Jesus was punished on the cross instead of us. Now Job's friends thought that God was punishing, punishing Job because of some unconfessed sin. But they were wrong. Job lived a repentant life with faith in his Redeemer. Jesus' disciples at one time asked, Who sinned, this parents or, 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 or this man that he was born blind? The disciples thought that God was punishing the man with blindness because of sin. But the disciples were wrong. Now, God does, however, discipline us out of love in order to strengthen our faith. That's Hebrews 12. And God can direct evil <coughs> for his own purpose. He used Babylon, for example, to chastise Israel for their unbelief. And we certainly should fear God's wrath against sin and unbelief. And we should live a life of repentance and faith in Christ. It's also easy for us to think that God reward, that people who are uh, wealthy and healthy uh, are rewarded by God because of something they've done, done right. But scripture does not make the correlation between riches, health, and God's reward. The truth of the matter is that all of us suffer in a fallen world. All of us are sinners by nature. Therefore, all of us should live a life of repentance. But why is there sin in our lives? Why is there death? Why is there trial, tribulation, and suffering? It's because of Adam's sin in the Garden of Eden. The law reminds us that the wages of sin is death. But the gospel goes on to say that the gift of God is eternal life through Christ Jesus our Lord. The law reminds us that we cannot solve our own problems, that we cannot save ourselves. And then we are driven to the gospel where we learn that Jesus is our comfort and our peace. He paid for our sin and he overcame death and the devil for us. We just sang. When in the hour of deepest need, we know not where to look for aid. When days and nights of anxious thought, no help or counsel yet have brought. And the hymn goes on to say, to you, O faithful God, we cry. To you, 
Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, we cry in our prayers for help and mercy. I'm sure that the Canaanite woman in our Holy Gospel for today had many days and nights of anxious thought. Her daughter is possessed by a demon. What suffering would they have gone through because of this? No one was able to help her daughter except Jesus, the son of David. In the end, Jesus had mercy upon the mother and he healed the daughter. And, and so we are not without consolation or hope. In this world, we have many troubles, but Christ has overcome the, the world by by paying for our sin and overcoming death and the devil. While each of us and, and everything around us is perishing, the word of the Lord stands forever and it will never perish. God's word will last forever. You do not have a God who knows nothing about suffering. Jesus suffered on the cross more than you will ever suffer. We do not have a high priest who is unable to sympathize with our weaknesses, but one who has been tempted in every way that you are, who has borne all of your sin and griefs and sorrows in his body and the cross, who has suffered and died in your place, and he knows, he knows your situation. He has flesh and blood like, like us, and he has become like us in every way, yet without sin. Therefore, we are able to pick up our cross and to follow him. God the Father did not spare his only, his only son, but gave him up for us all. And he raised his, the, his son from the dead and has seated him at the right hand of the Father. Jesus has won victory over our enemies. Therefore, your life in Christ is by faith in the word of God and not by human sight. Just so, in spite of all that you see and feel and experience in yourself and the world around you, the power of the Lord is made perfect in weakness under the cross. Christ bore our sins in his own body in the cross that we might be redeemed with his own blood and made righteous in his resurrection from the dead. And so it is true for you as well, for whom Christ died, for you are crucified, put to death with Christ by your baptism, and you've raised with him, and you've been raised with him as well. When bad things happen to us, it does not mean that we get what we deserve. None of us are more righteous than the other person. We should always repent of our sin and trust in the forgiveness of sins. When we suffer, we have a tendency to ask, why is this happening to me? What did I do to deserve this? Where is God? Is he not strong enough to prevent this from happening? When we suffer, it's easy for us to doubt God, his goodness, and his mercy. So suffering is not a sign that God has abandoned us. He has promised to be with us always by means of gospel and sacrament. He also helps us to endure the troubles that come into our lives. God will not let us be tempted beyond our ability. And at times we don't understand why things happen, but God causes all things to work together for good to those who are called according to his purpose. Jesus suffered more than anyone here. And on the cross, he absorbed all of the sin, all of the pain, and all the misery, and all the evil of this world into himself. And he went to the cross, and he died for our sin. Therefore, Jesus knows what it's like to suffer. He has scars, too. He is able to sympathize with our every weakness, and he comforts us with his word and his promise of life and salvation. How do you know that God loves you? He loves you because Jesus died upon the cross for your sin. And what God is really like, 
is not based on the trials and tribulations and sufferings around us. Rather, what God is really like is seen when we look at Jesus. And there on the cross, we see a God who loved us and who died for us. We see a God who suffered for us. And we have a God who saved us <clears throat> by the waters of holy baptism and who feeds us with his word and here from the altar. <clears throat> and so we press on toward the goal of heaven. We eagerly await, wait to be free from this bondage of corruption. And so, dearly beloved of the Lord, while we remain here on this earth, live each day by faith in God's grace and mercy and his loving care. Trust in the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. And as we suffer and die with our Lord, we are also raised to newness of life. The Canaanite woman in, in our text for today had faith in Christ and who he is and what he's able to do. And she persevered and she knew that Jesus had the power to cast out the demon out of her daughter, and he did. For you who are struggling with afflictions of the flesh and the assaults of the devil, seek out the care of your pastor. He is called to speak the word, word of the Lord against the lies of the devil and against the deceptions of the sinful flesh. He will come alongside you as a servant of Christ and will bring you comfort of the gospel and will pray for you. In the midst of various trials and tribulations, we are tempted to isolate ourselves from others and to retreat into our own hearts and minds. We are ashamed of what others might think of us. We suppose that, that we must sort things out on our own. It is good for us to receive support from others, their encouragement and their prayer, that, that, so that they also may come alongside of us and help us in our trials and tribulations. We suffer from many things, and yet sometimes these are a great blessing for us because they teach us to live not for ourselves, but for Christ who loved us and died for us. St. Paul says in our epistle lesson for today that suffering produces perseverance and per perseverance produces character and character produces hope and the hope that is yours in Christ Jesus shall never be put to shame. The Canaanite woman suffered and yet by God's grace her suffering produced perseverance and then hope in Christ. In the midst of our suffering, then, we walk by faith in the word of God, just so in spite of all that you see and feel and experience in yourselves and the world around you, the power of, of God is made perfect in weakness under the cross. We all suffer from various trials and tribulations and yet pray. The Canaanite woman in our text for today prayed and prayed, seeking mercy from Jesus and in the end, he answered her prayer. Jesus healed her daughter. Our Father in heaven hears and answers our prayer for the sake of Christ. Call upon him in the day of trouble, and he hears your prayers. Our Lord may or may not remove your suffering, and yet he still loves you and cares for you. We all suffer from various trials and tribulations, and yet, will these things separate us from the love of Christ? St. Paul answers in Romans chapter, no, uh, chapter 8, no. He says, in all these things we are more than conquerors through, through him who loved us. For I am sure that neither death nor life, nor angels nor principalities, nor powers present nor things to come, nor height nor depth nor anything else in all of creation will be able to separate us from the love of God which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. As you, by the grace of God, endure the various trials and tribulations in your life, remember your baptism. It identifies who you are, a baptized lamb of God, redeemed with the blood of Christ. Pray, 
Repent of your sin and rejoice in the gospel and hear the voice of your good shepherd in the preaching of the gospel. Confess your sin and receive the word of absolution. Jesus has come in love to save you. He's given himself for you. But even now, he comes to serve you in his body and blood offered here from the altar. Here from the altar, he, he, you don't receive crumbs. You don't receive a full course meal, but, but you receive a wafer and a sip from the cup, which is our Lord's body and blood for the forgiveness of all your sin. Jesus once said, in this world you will have tribulation. He's honest. He knows. He said, in this world you will have tribulation. But he goes on to say, but be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. Sin is paid for. Death is defeated. And heaven is open. Your sins are forgiven. And these gifts from God we hold on to through faith, even in the midst of suffering. God is able to bring peace to you who are troubled, and the power of his word calms your anxious heart. And God's word, God's word brings to you a peace that the world can never give. It gives you comfort from all your troubles. It gives you faith to trust in Jesus as your rest and your peace. So by God's grace, Stand firm in his word and persevere through every trial and tribulation. And in the end, God will deliver you from the evils of this world and will call you home to heaven. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Now may the peace of God which passes all understanding keep our hearts and minds in Christ Jesus and the life everlasting. Amen.
In our prayers this morning, we also include the uh, family of Donald Lynx. Uh, Donald is Jimmy Lynx's brother. Uh, Donald's uh, wife, Linda Kay, uh, was laid to rest on Tuesday, and so we remember the family in our prayers. Please rise for prayer. <coughs> Almighty God, Heavenly Father, of your tender mercy, of your tender love toward us sinners, you have given us your Son, that being in him, we may have everlasting life. By your Spirit, comfort us in all of our troubles and protect us from all doubt, so that we may remain steadfast in the faith and come at last to eternal life. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. Almighty and everlasting God, you are the consolation of the sorrowful and the strength of the weak. In this earthly life, we endure sufferings and death before we enter into eternal glory. Grant us grace at all times to subject ourselves to your holy will and to continue steadfast in the true faith to the end of our lives. In the midst of tribulation and distress, help us to receive your abundant comfort and peace. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. Almighty God and gracious Father, bless those in our congregation who are homebound. Continue to bring them your gospel and sacrament. Care for them and protect them. In the midst of weakness, anxiety, or loneliness, grant them an increase of faith in your loving kindness. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. Gracious Lord, you are the great physician of both body and soul. Look with compassion on Annalise, who will have a surgical procedure, on Mackenzie and Marcy, who are recovering from surgery, and for Kathy, Cheryl, Ruth, Monica, and Margie. If it be your will, give them a full restoration to health and strength. In the midst of these difficulties, keep them firm in their faith and trust in you, that they never doubt your love and care for them. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. Eternal Father, you alone make the decisions concerning life and death. We ask you to show mercy to your servant, Carol Baus, whose death seems imminent. Keep her in her baptismal grace and in your abiding care. At your chosen time, grant her a peaceful departure and a joyous entrance into everlasting life with the glorious company of all your saints. Lord, in your mercy. Lord God, heavenly Father, maker of heaven and earth and giver of life, we thank you for all the mercies you granted to Ruth Grosshans and also to Linda K. Lynx during their earthly life, especially for calling them to faith in Jesus. Comfort the survivors who mourn their deaths with the hope of the glorious resurrection and a joyful reunion in heaven. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Heavenly Father, as your Son invited all who labor and are burdened to come to him for rest, now grant the peace of sins forgiven to your people who come before you in the sacrament of your Son's body and blood. Preserve them from impenitence and unbelief that no one may take the sacrament for judgment. Cover them with the robe of Christ's righteousness. Strengthen their faith. Increase their love and hope. And in the end, seat them at your heavenly table to enjoy your goodness forever. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let 
let us give thanks unto the Lord our God. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who overcame the assaults of the devil and gave his life as a ransom for many, that with cleansed hearts we might be prepared joyfully to celebrate the Paschal Feast in sincerity and truth. Therefore, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying, heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you, this do in remembrance of me. In the same way also he took the cup after supper, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always.
give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good. Let us pray. We give thanks to you, almighty God, that you have refreshed us through this salutary gift, and we implore you that of your mercy you would strengthen us through the same, in faith toward you and in fervent love toward one another. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. The Lord be with you. Bless we the Lord. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen.